Okay, let's take a walk through the 25th anniversary edition of the Hammerhead Drum Plugin by Bram Boss. First, let's take a look at the soul dial. As I turn it down, you can hear that the pattern becomes a little more rigid. This is a very subtle shifting of various parameters to give patterns a natural feel or a bit of soul. This is a very subtle change and depending on the content of your pattern may be more or less noticeable. Next, let's take a look at shuffle. Everybody knows what it does, so let's just do a quick shuffled house pattern to show it working. We have a standard copy and paste of patterns. Note when I click on pattern two to paste, the white outline stayed on pattern one. This is the currently playing pattern. The pattern being edited has a light overlay and a pattern that contains data has a slightly darker overlay. Empty patterns have no overlay. Note that pattern playback is set to manual. This means that because I have now selected pattern two, it will begin playback at the start of the next bar. If we choose random, a random pattern would play after each bar, and if we select sequence, the patterns would play in sequence. Pattern one, to pattern two, to pattern three, etc, etc. We have load preset and save preset. If we load one of the factory presets, you will see that it not only loads the kit, but also loads the sequence data too. However, if we load a template, it just loads the kit. This is great for loading a kit as a starter and to create your own pattern. Save preset allows you to save your presets to the user presets section. Volume is the master volume. This sets the volume of the master output. Note, you still have individual outputs for each channel too. Next, let's look at the sounds panel. You can open this by pressing the sounds button or by double pressing one of the channel tabs below. Handily, once the panel is open, you can quickly switch to each sound by tapping its tab. Inside the sound panel, we find three sections. First, the classic built-in samples that appeared in the original software 25 years ago with a couple of sneaky additions. You can go through samples while the sequence is playing to preview them in context. Next is user samples where you can load any sample. Let's load a loop and use duration to change it from one shot to two bars because this is a two bar loop and it will now sync perfectly with pattern tempo. You can also set user samples to choke each other. Only the last triggered sample will play out of any samples that have choke enabled. Last, we have clear sample data, and this simply removes the currently loaded sample. Next up, we have the drum synth. Here you can synthesize your own sounds from scratch. The drum synth is made up of an oscillator, a noise generator, and a resonator. On our oscillator, we can change pitch, change the shape between sine wave, triangle, and square. We can mix between drop, which is a pitch envelope, and FM, which modulates the frequency. Change the rate, which will change the speed of the drop envelope or the speed of the frequency modulation. And finally, the decay, which changes the length of the sound from the oscillator. Next, we can layer in some noise. We have a mix control to mix between our oscillator and noise generator. We have a combination high pass bandpass filter bank. This creates various profiles throughout its range.
Last, we have a decay to set the length of the noise. Next, we have a resonator string. You can set its level, its frequency, and its decay. The resonator adds extra harmonics to the body and decay of your sound. It's best to experiment with a resonator. A lot of sounds can be found by tweaking. There is also a randomize button, which is great for quickly creating new sounds. Finally, in our drum synth, we have copy and paste patch. You can use those to copy patches to other channels. The last thing in our sounds panel is the sound name. Just click to change the name of your sound and the channel tab will update too. Let's take a look at our distortion. You can turn the distortion on individually for each channel. To do this, just open the mixer and enable distortion on that channel. But note the amount and type are both set globally. When I enable distortion on the snare, it has the same type and amount as the kick. The compression works in a similar way. Enable per channel in the mixer, but type and amount are set globally. Next, we have two global modifiers. First, glitch. This will re trigger your sounds to create glitch effects. You can set the chaos, which is the amount of the glitchiness, and chance, which is how often the glitch will occur. Our next modifier is mutation. Mutation will place steps from your sequence in different places so that your pattern is continually changing. Let's open our mixer and take a look. Here you can set volume and pan per channel, enable distortion and compression per channel, as we just saw, and also mute channels. Note, if you long press a channel tab, this will solo that channel, long press again to unsolo. If we click view mode, we can switch between views. However, in this case, I'm just gonna open full screen to show both views together. Now we can see our automation lanes. Here you can set various values per step in the pattern. You can set velocity, pitch, decay, chance, flam, retrigger, and also start point.
let's load a loop from our factory content so that we can see how start point can be used for slicing. If we trigger a few extra steps, then change the start point on those steps, you can hear the loop being sliced. The start point slider has a resolution of 8 steps, so your loop is always sliced into 8. Also note that on the last trigger, you can also hear some pitch change left over from our last example. You can use the up and down arrows to go up and down through your sound channels directly in the automation lanes, and visually you can see each channel steps too. Let's create some random sequence. Now we can open our channel config, make sure we have modify set to all, and now press clear as you can see the sequence has been cleared entirely. Note, you can clear all and individual channels by changing modify between all and this. Random works in a similar way. Open channel config, set to all, press random, and we now have a random pattern generated. Again, note that modify can be set to all or this to randomly generate entire patterns or just individual channels. Let's create a polyrhythm using our channel config. Set modify to this and enter some kicks into our pattern. Now let's create some hi-hats, but this time we will set our steps for the hi-hat channel to 7. Now the hi-hats are continuously evolving around the 16 steps of the kick sequence, because every 16 steps the hi-hats play 2.3 times. If we turn off our play button at the bottom of our UI, it changes the way patterns are triggered. Instead of just playing when you press play in your host, now you can trigger patterns via MIDI, as if they were sample loops themselves. Note that because this is triggering patterns, all of the automation is played back, and no matter the tempo, Hammerhead stays in sync. And the very last part of the UI, sharing. Press this button to save and share presets externally using the standard iOS sharing panel. Over the next six months, we'll be sharing Hammerhead content in the form of tutorials, sound packs, and presets as we build up to the 25th birthday of one of the pieces of software that started it all. Before VST, before AU, and before we expected every piece of software to do everything possible. 25 years and still hammering heads.